Anne Marie Boss. Right. So I come to Creative Mornings all the time. Uh, you may have seen me here with one of our resident babies, this guy, Wallace Kahlo. He comes with me sometimes to wreak havoc. Uh, if you say my company name out loud, as Tara started to do, uh, UMBN, you'll hear what's at the heart of what I do, which is human beings. I work with people. I work with all sorts of different organizations that span the corporate and nonprofit sectors. Uh, I am a consultant. I run, uh, I design and excuse me, facilitate uh, meetings for companies. I love what I do. Uh, it's always different. I get to help. Uh, two newly combined departments use Legos to identify communication silos. I get to help a nonprofit build their three year strategic plan. Uh, a group of scientists run a brainstorming session. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, when Tara called me to speak around empowerment and women's empowerment in particular, uh, one program came immediately to mind. Um, but before I dive into that, I'd like to ask everyone a question, and that is, who in here would describe themselves as creative? Awesome. I figured being at an event called Creative Mornings, there might be a, a majority of hands that went up. Uh, guess what happens? when I normally ask a group of adults, particularly in the corporate sector, that question. Right, or what I call the T-Rex arm, which is this like, <laughs> I'm not raising my hand, but I, I might. Uh, what do you think happens when you ask a group of kindergartners this question? <laughs> Me! <laughs> I'm an artist, I'm creative. And then somewhere along the way, we lose this belief in our inherent creativity. And actually, it's around the third grade and the advent of standardized testing. That's a different conversation. Uh, so I wanted to start today just with that as the foundation, uh, that you are all creative. It is inherent in your makeup as a human being. And what I get to do is bring the processes to teams, meetings, organizations, and the tools to help empower you in tapping into that creativity. One of the programs that I am most humbled and fulfilled working with is out of the Dolly Museum Innovation Labs. It is their Women's Empowerment Program. The museum works with Bay Area nonprofits that serve women in domestic violence and houselessness situations. We get to bring in their clients for full or half day workshops. And by the end of the day, they leave with a toolkit in positive mindsets, creative problem solving. And a disclaimer here, uh, this is definitely not meant to speak as if their issues are something that they should be solving. Uh, these are toolkits that anyone could use that are empowering to start your day with. Uh, and so I wanted to give everyone a chance to experience a tool we might use in a workshop like that. So when you walked in, you hopefully grabbed a color card. Uh, I've never felt more like a fugitive at Home Depot than <laughs> <laughs> than when I was taking 360 collar cards. Um, he didn't say anything. <laughs> um, and I go there all the time, so I don't know. Uh, but uh, don't worry if you didn't, and don't worry if you're not sitting next to a stranger. Uh, you can still participate. So what we're going to do uh, in a couple minutes is I'm going to ask you to turn to the person next to you and introduce yourself using the color you chose. We're in kind of a time crunch here, so just say your name, the color you chose, and whoa, whoa, whoa not yet, right, bit, bit. <laughs> when I say go, <laughs> uh, so you'll just say your name, the color you chose, and why, 
Tara gave us a great example <laughs> uh, <laughs> this morning with purple. Uh, and then we'll come back together. OK, does that make sense to everyone? OK, go. I love watching that wave ripple through. <laughs> I was going to do their one, two, three eyes on me, but I think it's just not my thing. <laughs> I love it. But, uh, OK. let's. Let's talk about what just happened. Um, first, what normally happens when you ask someone, how are you? What do you get? Fine, good, OK, right. Using a tool like this, you get to use new rhetoric that steps us out of our typical, everyday words that we use over and over again. When someone walks in and they say, I'm Mary. I chose firecracker red because everybody knows I'm a firecracker. <laughs> I am full of energy and I am ready to go today. I know a lot about Mary, <laughs> right? Not only do I know her energy level and her level of excitement for the day, I get a window into her deeper personality, how she sees other people see her. As a facilitator, this is incredibly beneficial. For Mary, we've just given her a tool to do something incredibly vulnerable. By saying, Mary, tell us how this color describes you. We create a degree of separation. And so now, she can give us that window into who she is in an incredibly safe way. And as a facilitator, your number one job is maintaining safety. So new language, force connections. This is an example of a brainstorming tool called force connections. What do you think would have happened if I put two colors on the table and asked you to just choose one to describe your mood. Would you have been able to do it? What if I only put one? What if I only said, here's firecracker red. Could you use this to describe you or how it's not you? Right. Your brain would immediately make a connection of how that is or isn't you. We build connections. It is in a makeup of our brain. We do it lightning fast. It's why you see faces in electrical outlets. It's how Bill Bowerman saw the first Nike running shoe in his wife's waffle iron. We are inherently creative beings. We have to stretch that muscle. As a, as a facilitator, if I put a waffle iron in front of you and said, how might you use this to build a new product? I couldn't start the day that way, right? <laughs> so I start with asking you to tell me how a color describes your mood. And I might end the day by asking you to tell me how a painting or an object might be used to help you view your challenge in a new way. We scaffold, we stretch athletes, we scaffold participants. Empowerment and metrics. I'd like to tell you about one more participant, uh, Dana. Uh, Dana walked into a workshop incredibly flustered and frustrated. She was near tears. Uh, her children were supposed to be able to come with her to the workshop, and due to transportation and communication issues, they were no longer able to attend the much-anticipated event at the museum. She chose a dark, brooding purple to describe her mood. By the end of the day, she chose a bright white. She described it as clear and focused. Now, this is an incredible testament to that workshop. But beyond that, it's huge for Dana. By 
Creating moments of self-reflection at the beginning and at the end, she built a narrative arc. And more than that, she owned that narrative. It's easy to see how, for someone who is in a situation of houselessness or domestic violence, this is empowering, creating these moments to own your narrative. But all of these are things that we can use in the everyday. They're universal tools. New language and tools for new language helps us to have meetings that force us to step out of our industry lingo and have deeper, more creative dialogue. Forced Connections reminds us that we are inherently creative and helps us to build and stretch that muscle. And moments of self-reflection and before and after metrics can show us how far we've come and where we have room to grow. So I'm gonna come back at the end and I'm gonna remind you to pick up your color card, post creative mornings, how you feel, after hearing from these next two incredible people. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Christina, as Tara said. I just wanna say thank you to Tara and Creative Mornings for um, asking me to speak today. It is truly an honor. This is my first time actually doing something like this, so forgive me in advance. <laughs> Um, so, as Tara said, um, I'm a natural light photographer. I love working with female entrepreneurs, um, telling their brand story through photography. And, um, you know, one thing that when I first started my business that I, you know, really wanted to do is see women succeed um, in their businesses. I've always loved working with startups. Um, with new businesses, but when I started my photography business and just thinking about, you know, what did I want, how did I want to build my career um, through photography is just seeing women win. So before I started my photography business, you would rarely ever see me in a photo, whether it was with family, with friends, you know, at events. Um, and I self-appointed myself as a photographer long before I even started my business. Um, because I wasn't happy with my appearance. I wasn't happy with my weight. I have two kids, as Tara said, and you know, I didn't have the post-baby snapback that I really was looking forward to. Um, and so when I saw pictures of myself, I wasn't really happy with that, and so I didn't want to be in front of the camera. I wanted to be behind the camera. And um, you know, when I started my business, working with these strong women, and oh my gosh, just some of the stories that I hear of just these women who, you know, they've overcome something or, you know, why they start their business. Because I ask them during a shoot, like, why did you start your business? Like, what makes you excited about what you're doing? And, you know, I realized, you know, I'm showering them with these compliments and telling them, you look great and don't worry about it. You know, they tell me, oh, I don't like this about myself. I don't like that about myself. I'm like, girl, you got this. Don't worry about it. Um, and it wasn't until I started thinking about, you know, I want to take these, you know, these headshots of myself um, so that I could brand my business online. Um, I realized I was doing the same things I was encouraging them not to do. You know, I was saying, oh, I don't like it. I don't like that belly fat. I don't like how that looks. And I'm like, wow, how am I going to encourage these women and empower these women if I'm not happy with myself? So... I came up with this tagline, and I'm going to give a nod to Gina as well, um, to embrace yourself. Embrace what makes you different. Um, you know, I love connecting with women who have, you know, in all different shapes and sizes. I photograph women in all different shapes, sizes, colors, and it's just been such an amazing experience just learning from them, but also building that self-confidence in myself removing that self-doubt that it doesn't matter what I look like, although I do look pretty good, you know. <laughs> I like how I look. I like my style. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I think it's important before we can empower someone else, we have to work on ourselves. No, we're not perfect. No, we don't have it all together. But you know what? If we work on ourselves and encourage ourselves, 
We can be our, you know, our truest selves and really give our best to others. So these are just some of the amazing women that I've been able to work with. And I've worked with, wow, um, so many different women, whether it's influencers in health and fitness, and fashion and style, hairstylists, writers, authors, um, you know, women who own brick and mortar stores. I would have never imagined I would have been able to work with some of these women. I'm still new in business, so I know the best is yet to come. But just having these opportunities and hearing these ladies' stories has just been such a blessing to me. Um, and then I've also had just an amazing opportunity to join Babe Crafted. I'm sure a lot of you know Gina. Um, she's coming up after me. And um, just being a member, I just recently joined a few months ago. And it really strengthened my belief in um, female empowerment and just working with with women. Um, but I had an opportunity to photograph a couple of events, babe crafted events recently, and it didn't feel like work. You know, it really was just hearing um, the panels and just seeing the smiling faces and all the hugs. I was like, this is what I believe I'm called to do. So thank you to Gina for that. Um, next slide, please. So before I get into that, I want to tell a story of a lady I've uh, shot with yesterday, Miss Hattie. She was a 70-year-old woman, okay? She wasn't, you know, your typical 70-year-old woman. She had her long, beautiful gown. She was driving her Tesla. I was like, all right, Miss Hattie. Um, <laughs> and um, she recently moved here from Texas uh, to be with her son and his family. And she left everything. She had, you know, a great job in Texas. She does have family in Texas as well. And I asked her, I said, you know, why did you choose to do this photo shoot? Because she's like, I want to celebrate my relocation. You know, I want to tell my friends, hey, you know, I'm living it up in Florida. And I was like, wow, that is so amazing at 70 years old, starting a new journey, you know? And I related to that so much because, you know, I, I Actually, starting my photography business was an, is a new thing for me. Um, I started just a couple of years ago photographing my daughter. And I didn't grow up wanting to be a photographer. I feel like it kind of found me. People ask me, like, how long have you do, been doing this? What got you into photography? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, I love taking pictures. And now I love being in front of the, the camera as well. But it was just amazing, you know, asking her, you know, why did you... Why did you choose to relocate? Why are you so positive about this experience? And she was excited, and she was like, you know what? My friends asked me, like, you're moving to another state. You don't know anyone except, you know, your son and his family. Why are you so happy about that? And she was like, you know what? It's just part of my journey. It's just part of my journey. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. So I just want to leave you with some thoughts on, you know, if you're feeling that self-doubt, whether it's, you know, getting in front of the camera <laughs> or speaking in front of 100 plus people right now for the first time. Um, there's just a few things that I personally have done to um, help build my self-confidence. So, so speaking positive affirmations such as, I can do this, I'm the best at this, I provide value to those around me. People are excited to work with me. When I say those things to myself, it gets me excited to get out there and you know, meet that new lady or ask her about herself or you know, try something new. And then also wear clothes that make you feel confident. I know that's something we probably hear that's like, oh, it's cliche, but it really does make a difference. Think about when you try on you know, a beautiful dress or some new shoes, it makes you wanna move, wanna dance. You know? So wear those things more often, even like, okay, so sometimes I do go to the grocery store looking a mess. But sometimes I'm like, you know what, maybe I might meet a new potential client. So let me dress it up a little bit. Let me wear my hat. <laughs> um, practice self-care on a daily basis. And we actually had an awesome um, self-care event, um, the Babe Crafted, Babe Crafted members recently. And you know, we talked about what are some things that you're doing now you know, for self-care, and what are some things you would like to do? And it really made me think about you know, where I can improve on that. But, you know, before a photo shoot or before, you know, speaking with someone or doing something that's out of your comfort zone, you know, you want to take that time on a daily basis to prepare for those things, to, you know, care for yourself, I, you know, as a mom, a wife, 
you know, a business owner, a sister, a friend, a daughter, you know, we get pulled in so many different directions, but we have to take care of ourselves first so that we can be the best to those around us. Um, so I have to put a photography tip in here. So learn your angles, practice in the mirror, practice posing. I know it feels weird. I say this all the time during my shoots. I'm like, I know, you know, putting your hand behind your ear feels weird, but it looks great in a photo, okay? You, just trust me on this. And then I don't have this in the slide, but the last one is just surround yourself with people who encourage and inspire you. There's nothing like being around people who are winning in life or who are chasing their dreams alongside you to just lift you up, especially in those times that are, you know, you may feel down that day, but just surround yourself with people who encourage and inspire you. And, okay, one more. Always be learning. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so I hope you don't mind if I have my notes on my phone. Um, I figured in the photos after the event that I would just look like a millennial in her natural habitat. <laughs> I wrote that joke last night. Went up, um, I was like, James, my partner, I was like, I have a great joke for tomorrow. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> um, so um, before I get started, I want to say my dad and sister are here. Can everyone say hi, Steve and Jackie? Hi, Steve and Jackie. Thank you for being here. Um, also, um, we have some Babe Crafted members here. Could you do me a favor and stand up so we can see you? Yay! Thank you for choosing to create and build something great here in Tampa, St. Pete, and Clearwater. Um, so good morning, everyone. My name is Gina Macchio. I'm the founder of Babe Crafted. Um, it is a business development club for women in Tampa Bay. Uh, super honored to be here. This is an absolute like dream scenario, speaking about women's empowerment at a Creative Mornings event. Um, thank you, Tara, and to the entire Creative Mornings crew for making this event what it is. Thank you to all of you wonderful attendees, because you add some magic as well. Um, and thank you to Anne Marie and Christina for sharing today. You both did an amazing job. Um, so to break the ice a bit, I want to introduce you to who I am. This is um, a group photo that, from our self-care event. So you can see you know, how many amazing women are a part of it and that are open to, to sharing and getting to know one another. Um, so we can go to the next one. Hello, 2009. So uh, to break the ice and introduce you to who I am, I was inspired by last month's speaker, Stephen Peterman of the Sketchbook Project. He opened his uh, presentation with a 10-year challenge. Um, I don't normally like to think of myself as like a bandwagon kind of person, but I actually am. It just takes me super long to get involved. Um, like I saw Twilight two years after it came out, but I saw it. I saw all of those movies. Um, so this is my 10-year challenge. Um, I was helping my friend uh, Chad work on a short film. The film was about a girl um, who rides her bike to, um, into space, and she gets a star and brings it back to share with her friends. Like, super sweet, right? So um, some things that don't change. Uh, I'm still that person that is willing to do whatever she can to help you realize your dreams. Things that do change, um, well, I'm wearing three shirts in that photo, so I don't wear three shirts at a time anymore. Also, um, I'm wearing a headband with a fake plastic bird on it. I was, uh, I had a lot of spare time in college. Um, you know, I was making like my own headbands and hair clips and I don't have that much spare time anymore. So no headband today. So um, we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. And we can hang out here for a moment. So um, the thing that brings me here today is uh, something that our culture has been talking a lot about over the past couple of years. Um, and that's women's empowerment. This is by no means a new topic. Um, but it's just as important as ever. Um, but I've oftentimes seen it talked about in a very general sense, as if it's a synonym for inspire. I feel like empower and inspire often get used interchangeably, but I feel like they're very different words. Um, they're both verbs which incite the person receiving the empowerment or inspiration to do something. But empowerment doesn't motivate you. Um, it's defined as measures that increase the degree of autonomy and self-determination in people and in communities in order to enable them to represent their interests in a responsible and self-determined way, acting on their own authority. Um, when you're inspiring someone, they already have the tools and resources they need to do that thing. 
Um, but your words or actions are the spark that they need to move forward. But with empowerment, they do not have the tools and resources. So you're helping to bridge that gap by extending said tools and resources. We can empower each other collectively through empathy and mutual support, um, and specifically through the topic I want to talk about today, which is kindness. Um, I believe that empowerment is rooted in kindness. When you extend kindness to another person, you both allow them to claim their own power and dignity, and you insist upon your own. It takes a lot of strength and confidence to be kind. Uh, and sometimes it also takes time and patience, too. So, um, and that realization is why Babe Crafted takes on the mission of working with nonprofits that are focused on women and girls so seriously. So, you know, that work, linking entrepreneurs with charities and nonprofits that helps them do the work that they can do. Um, it also helps remind the entrepreneurs the strength that they have and the inspiration they get from helping others. Um, so we can go to the next slide. So uh, thank you, Tara. We do a lot of cool things um, within our organization, like creating custom videos about each of our members, monthly workshops, you know, all kinds of really great things like that. But what I've found is that the thing that members love the most is what they get from each other, from those relationships, that kindness, that willingness to come to the table and take the time to really hear one another out and support one another the best way they can. So um, I have a couple photos here. Um, the, uh, the first one was uh, Tona of the Paper Seahorse, and she was talking about how the, the best part is the amazing and inspiring members. Our next slide, we've got Amy of Paper Finch, who is wearing a lovely dress with birds on it, um, as one does when your business name is Paper Finch. Um, that her, uh, she loves the automatic access to the community of, of women who are there to support you and cheer you on. And then our third one is Lisa Gilmore. You've probably seen her around St. Pete. She has amazing bright red hair. She's an interior designer. Um, she's said that it's a positive forum for girl bosses to inspire, learn, and have the tools to kick ass. <laughs> Those little asterisks are S's. Um, so, but what I also want to draw attention to is, you know, some of these nonprofits. Um, and we have Alexia from Trusting the Process here today. Can you raise your hand? Woo! Thank you for the work you do, girl. Um, there are a lot of stories that I could share today. Um, you know, there's one photo up here from uh, an event we collaborated on Girls on the Run with, another one from Dress for Success Tampa Bay. Um, but on the next slide uh, is one of the stories I want to highlight, which is from CASA. Um, how many of you have heard of CASA St. Petersburg? Yes, that's amazing. Thank you, all of you. And whoever's beeping that is, do that thing it's telling you to do. Um, so, one in three women and one in four men are survivors of domestic violence. And CASA is Pinellas County's largest domestic violence shelter. Um, they have a thrift store located on First Avenue North, um, and their shelter is GPS protected. So we had to sign confidentiality waivers and authorize CASA to do background checks on us for our volunteer day there. Um, I was in one of the waiting rooms at the front office um, Waiting for our volunteers to arrive, I had my little event cart with snacks and water for our volunteers and also some supplies we had collected through a donation drive. And I overheard in the next room um, one of the, the women at the shelter talking to another woman. I couldn't see them, but I overheard the first woman nearly in tears say that uh, she was in a place in her life right now where she couldn't even afford ibuprofen. And uh, that really hurt my heart, you know? Like, I've never been in a place where I didn't have this basic access to go to the store, go to CVS, and buy some ibuprofen, right? Like, that's something we really take for granted on a regular basis. But in this moment, that was that woman's full focus. You know, that was really important to her. Um, so I don't have the whole details. This is not about whether or not she got ibuprofen from CASA. I'm not trying to say, like, CASA doesn't give people ibuprofen. Um, that's not the point. Um, but the point is, you know, um, that... I've never been in that situation, and, and some of us in this room have, and some of us haven't. Um, but uh, so what we were there to, that day to do was to um, clean a large kitchen. It's a kitchen and dining space uh, where families eat there on a, multiple times a day. So, um, you know, cleaning a kitchen seems really simple, but that's because kindness doesn't have to be complicated. You know, um, a little bit goes a long way is a cliche for a reason, because it's true. You know, a little bit um, makes a big impact. So uh, I wanted to point out in this photo, this is, we're posing with our cleaning cart. 
Um, <laughs> you might recognize the lovely face in the center. That is the wonderful Taylor Prater of Made Coffee. Whoop, whoop. Thank you for being a member, girl, and for being there that day. Next slide, please. Awesome. So um, the next door I have for you is from the Center for Girls in Seminole Heights. How many of you have heard of the Center for Girls? Awesome. Well, now everyone can raise their hand after today, so I consider that a huge victory. Um, so uh, this is the first nonprofit we ever partnered with, which was donating all the proceeds from a raffle that we had at our launch party in June of 2017. Um, and we were actually, we're actually currently working on a big philanthropic project right now um, with the center. So we've been there multiple times over the past couple months for meetings, which it's not public knowledge yet what we're going to be doing, but like y'all can keep a secret, right? You guys are good secret keepers. Okay, well, we're going to build a playground for these girls, the 47 girls that go to the center for girls and add some like creativity and fun to their day. Thank you. And if you want to be involved, come say hi after, um, I almost said after the show, um, after the presentation. <laughs> um, or, you know, send us a message on Instagram, like whatever your way of communicating is, don't be shy about saying hello. Um, so we have been going to the center a lot lately for meetings to just kind of move this project along. Um, and some of the uh, ladies who are volunteering their services for the project, ranging from interior design to public relations, had never been to the Center for Girls. So when they arrive for their first meeting, um, they get a tour from this wonderful woman, um, Sartora Schumann-Smith. She is the director of programming at the Center for Girls. When she arrived um, at that center, um, I believe it's four or five years ago, there were four girls and now there are 47, so that's really wonderful. Um, and Sartora will tell you about all the wonderful programming that the center does, you know, for these girls to teach them about all kinds of things, like everything from art to learning Japanese, like you name it, they probably are, have a program on it. So, um, you know, there are a lot of happy, wonderful stories, but there are some really tough stories too, like the girls coming from all different backgrounds and home situations, um, and some of them are going through some really difficult emotional and mental trauma. Uh, some of them have experienced terrible bullying. Some of them have been physically abused. Uh, many of them have little to no self-confidence and struggle with finding and claiming their self-worth. To hear about five-year-olds and 12-year-olds going through this is really challenging. <laughs> um, but there's something we can do about it. And that's kindness by way of getting involved in whatever way makes sense for you. So uh, nonprofits can definitely use money. Uh, and they can definitely use volunteer hours. But some other things they can use are donated items from their wish lists. Many of them have wish lists posted on their websites. Um, donated time of a skill you have to teach um, the, the women at that center or the girls at that center, you know, and to pass that knowledge on. Um, you know, and even sharing their content on social media. This way they can reach more people who want to get involved. Um, all of these efforts help them to do the valuable work they do for the women and girls who need it the most every day. Um, what's the next slide? Yes, okay, perfect. Um, so before I have to go, I want us all to do something right here in our seats um, that I hope will help you envision kindness as a tool for empowerment. So um, kindness is something you can do, but it's also something you can say. Uh, but no matter what form it comes in, it says, I see you. And when you hear about what it is I'm going to ask you to do, I was inspired by the Mr. Rogers documentary. Who has seen that documentary? Oh my gosh, okay, awesome. So if you haven't seen it yet, please go see it. Like I said, it came out like a year ago, and I'm just now seeing it. But <laughs> hey, better late than never. Um, so how many of you have flown on a plane before? Yes, I figured there'd be a lot of hands there. I just like getting people to raise their hands. Like I know that that's, <laughs> flying on a plane is a common thing for the most part. Uh, so you know, you've seen those safety and emergency cards that each seat pocket contains, you know? Um, so they tell you that in the case of emergency and if the pressure in the plane drops, oxygen masks will fall from the ceiling. The card tells you to put your oxygen mask on first. You could help more people if you can breathe yourself, right? I mean, but a, a lot of the times people totally skip the step of putting on their oxygen mask. And I don't mean that literally, like on planes, I mean in general, in life. Um, so uh, that seems selfish, but you can help the more, pe more people if you can breathe. Put on your oxygen mask, fill your cup. I invite you to do this for yourself today. So um, I want you to tell yourself something kind. 
Um, I want you to think about something you like about yourself. You are patient. You leave things better off, uh, better off than when you, the way you found them. You know, you are a great writer. You have wonderful fashion sense, Amy Braswell. Um, <laughs> But uh, it doesn't matter what the compliment is. I just want you to think about something that you like about yourself, and I want you to tell yourself that thing. You deserve to hear that thing. I can't tell if it's a microphone or there's like a, something crazy going on. But um, So I'm going to give you a moment to close your eyes, take a moment um, of quiet, tell yourself that compliment, and then when you're done, go ahead and open your eyes. So everybody go ahead and do that right now. Give yourself this moment. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so how do you feel in this moment? Do you feel stronger? Do you feel more energized? Uh, better able to face the day? That tiny silent act of kindness that you just did for yourself is magical. Affirmations work. Just a few words can change your whole attitude and that's real empowerment. I hope you'll all join me in going out into the world today in the spirit of kindness towards ourselves and each other. That's the symmetry, Tara. Um, and that's how we'll empower and lift each other up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so my name is Katherine Herbst, and I actually have a question specifically for you, Anne-Marie. Um, what is your background in that you understand the dynamics of groups so well? Because I think that's super interesting. It's definitely something that takes failing at. Um, so I started actually with the Dolly Museum Innovation Labs and Nate Schwagler, who was here, but I don't know if he still is, <laughs> uh, and just running workshops with people, uh, doing trainings. Um, there are suites of tools in this world that I didn't know about until joining the labs. Uh, tools and methodologies that help to understand group dynamics and how people feel when they're put on the spot, how people feel when you ask them to raise their hand. And over time, you start to see a rhythm in that and you start to be able to read that in people and use those tools to make sure there aren't, or as few as possible moments of uh, not having safety, unsafety. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess this one kind of goes for all three of you ladies. What woman inspired you or empowered you that you like look on to for inspiration constantly? <laughs> uh, okay, so I have two answers to this question. One is that for most of my life, the guides and mentors in my life were, for whatever reason, largely men. And quite recently, in the past two years, uh, several women in, have entered my life and taken me under their wing, uh, professionally and personally. And I, it became this trend. I don't know when it, <laughs> why it's so uh, in this so concentrated in this period of time. Uh, so in real life, there's a, f a few of those, um, but. If you don't know her, there's a woman named Beryl Markham, and she is like the original boss babe. Uh, she was a pilot from like Hemingway area. She was one of the first female pilots to cross the Atlantic. Uh, she was a horse trainer in Africa. It's, look her up. <laughs> um, so I actually did a blog post on this. <laughs> Go blogging. Um, I have to say Gina. I, ha I have to say Gina because, not because I'm a Babe Crafted member, <laughs> but I was inspired by her even before I joined, um, just to empower women. Um, Oprah, who's not inspired by Oprah? But she actually, um, so growing up, I wanted to be um, a newscaster and just seeing her um, with her talk show, I was like, I'm gonna be the next Oprah. I didn't go that route, but I'm still in the media aspect, I think. Um, and Beyonce, I mean, enough said. <laughs> Cheers to Oprah and Beyonce, for sure. 
Like, I think we can all like be our own Oprah or Beyonce, right? I think that's what they would want for us. Um, thank you so much, and I really loved hearing your answer too, Anne Marie. Uh, you know, some of these questions, um, you know, depending on the day, you'll answer differently. A lot like the color question. Um, but today, my response is my mother. Um, she passed away in 2010. Uh, but some lessons I learned from her were to have a sense of humor um, and to be kind and compassionate and to give wherever you can. And for that, I'll forever be grateful.